Greetings, welcome to Tribal Jazz Man Scholar. I wanted to talk in this post about one of my heroes. Jill Bolte Taylor, she's a neuroanatomist, um, but her work now, her life has been committed to talking about an experience she had after getting a stroke in her left hemisphere. And um, I came in contact with her by watching a video post that she made um, of her conference talk at TED. It was a 20 minute video in which she talks about her experience. Very popular, one of the most popular videos on the TED website and you can see it by clicking on this link. Um, but I wanted to summarize a little bit about what she said and what I think the implications of her talk are for the way I think about things. And, um, but basically, uh, as a neuroanatomist, um, she was able to understand something that was happening to her while she was having a stroke and then the implications of what was happening to her after she began to recover from her stroke. But what happened was she, um, she began to feel like she was losing, um, she was becoming paralyzed on one side of her body one morning on her way to work and she describes in vivid um, detail her attempts to use the telephone and how hard it was to talk and how in fact she was unable to talk and how this progressively got worse and at what point she realized she was having a stroke. But her stroke was on the left side of her brain. Um, the left hemisphere is what controls speech, language, linear cognitive thought. It's not the right hemisphere, which thinks in images, which is the center of our intuition. It's sort of the center of our awareness. And from her perspective, it's the center of our consciousness in a way. But she had a severe stroke. It took her eight years to recover. And she describes a sense that she'd lost all ability to discern the boundary between her body and everything around her. She literally felt as though she were merging with everything. She was unable to think. She could not speak and she could not understand language, but she was fully aware, is how she describes it. She had a sense of the profound connectedness of all things. Now, understand that the stroke is a burst of a blood vessel in the brain. It, it literally paralyzed her... Uh, left hemisphere, which is the cognitive, reasoning, rational, linear, uh, linguistic side of the brain. It's the one that has become very dominant in our modern times, in our culture, in our post-agricultural society. Uh, it's the part of the brain that um, sequences things um, and, that it, and, and that makes language uh, the spoken part and the, and the storage of words possible. Now, the right side of the brain interprets expressions. So when someone says, you have to be kidding me, versus, you have to be kidding me, it's the right side of the brain that observes the expression and the intonation and gets a gestalt feeling about what the person's communicating, whereas it's the left hemisphere that analyzes the words and the sequence and actually decides what each word stands for and then makes sense of the sentence. It's the right side that interprets the meaning and intent, especially with idioms and things of that kind. But not to stray too far into this difference between the right and left hemisphere, the critical difference that Jill Bolte Taylor identified was that while she was in her right hemisphere, she didn't know who she was, she didn't know her name, but she knew that the experience she was having was so vivid and profound and transformative that she describes being in the hospital bed and feeling as though she needed to come back into her body. She had sort of felt like she'd expanded beyond the physical limits of her body. But she knew that she had to come back into her body because she wanted to communicate to the world her experience. And she committed many years to recovery with a lot of help from her mother, her family. And then she's devoted her time now to speaking about her experience and the implications because she feels like if we can shut off this linear left hemisphere in right-handed people, it's not the same in everybody, but majority of people, this is the left hemisphere we're talking about. She says if we can shut that down, shut it off, we can step out of its machinations and step into the right hemisphere. She says the right hemisphere is the place of, of seeing the beauty in everything, appreciating the, the, the value of love, wanting to connect with all life. She describes it as this sort of epiphanous place of complete understanding of the purpose and meaning of life. This is her experience. But it touches on a number of things, and I wanted to share those before I close. It touches on animistic ways of seeing the world, um, believing that all life has consciousness. Because what really separates Homo sapiens, our species, from most of the other animals, even the higher order animals, is this ability to speak and this ability to rationally, cognitively sequence ideas, see a past, a present, and a future. And what she experienced, though, was a full-bodied awareness. 
of goodness, of life, of the value and importance of the connected community of living things. And she wasn't in that thinking mind. So it, it leads us to wonder whether or not all living things, even those without big cognitive left, he left hemispheres, whether they have that high level of consciousness about love and connectedness and beauty on some level that we can't fully understand. So it, it, it's important that we don't use our cognitive linear mind to make us believe we are superior to other life forms or that other life forms are not as important as us because they don't think like we do. Um, another area that it touches on is um, the analysis and the evaluation of, of how indigenous peoples cognitively experience the world. We know that when you're in nature, your left hemisphere quiets and your right hemisphere, the sensory awareness of things, the images, they all become very heightened. And people that live long periods of time in wild nature are much more balanced in this way and that people that have spent their entire lives in wild nature, indigenous peoples build cosmologies, belief systems, that incorporate these two parts of the brain in a very balanced way. And um, so it suggests, her experience suggests that this sort of mythic thinking in tribal peoples is very organic to the brain when our brain is not so heavily skewed into the cognitive linear side. And um, finally, I think it touches on some of the metaphysical um, practices, the spiritual practices of perhaps meditation, the reflective contemplative practices which seek to quiet that linear mind, to experience higher consciousness. It's, it helps us to understand that that really is a um, way to move out of the dominance of the thinking mind and into the more holistic, connected sort of world mind. Um, it also explains some of the experiences that people have who use mind-altering substances in order to achieve these levels of consciousness. They describe things similar to what Jill Bolte-Taylor describes in her talk. So I wanted to share that hero, Jill Bolte-Taylor, and encourage you to go watch her video. And thank you for jo joining Tribal Jazzman Scholar.